Hello, everybody. Okay, cool. I'll start marking the register so we don't have to waste too much time. Yeah, I realize now that last week we spent like the first 20 minutes of the lecture on, on that quiz. Um, but no, the quizzes are fun. So, so I will, what do you think? Should we do them like before each lesson? I think it's a good way of summarizing the last week. Um, maybe, maybe every second week you can decide. Cool. I, I did create one for today. Um, okay, but let me just start marking the rest. Just, uh, okay. There we go. Every week, you think? Okay, cool. Yeah, it depends. If it, I will do one every week, if we cover enough content in the previous week for like that can be asked in multiple choice questions, because there are that's the problem with the site is it can only be a typed question like a fill in the blank kind of thing or a or a multiple choice. Um, so like coding questions couldn't really do because you can't put like pictures and stuff. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I think they are fun. It's a good way of starting the lecture. So we'll just wait until everyone joins. I mean, we are still technically a little bit early, two minutes and 30 seconds. So we'll just wait until the rest of the group joins. So you guys are off school still? Until you're, you're off next week as well, right? Okay, I thought, I think matrix and grade, was it grade eight? I think grade eights or grade sevens are going back next week, I think. I wasn't sure. It's a bit vague how, and like, it seems like all this, okay, that's not correct. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, that's better for us. I assume it's much nicer for your guys' schedules. Are you going back to online classes though? I think Roosevelt was going to start online lessons. Okay, cool. Yeah, Roosevelt was only going to start online lessons in like three weeks, which I thought was crazy. You need to start them way sooner because you can't go from like hectic, hectic school schedule to nothing for three weeks to hectic school schedule. And need, you need some like consistency. Come on, everybody. Some people are always late. I'll wait to fill in the register a little bit and then we can. I mean, to be fair, this would happen in in-person lectures as well. Although the thing is with in-person lectures, it's much easier to keep going for two hours. Whereas these online lectures, it's very difficult to keep things interesting for a full two hours. But chapter four will be fun because we'll basically be making like a, I guess a website, not really, but like a little bit. We'll be learning web development, which is, which is nice. Probably my favorite topic in the course, I think. And today you guys will be finished with most of first year university computer science. So that's cool too. After we cover bubble sort. Ooh. Ah, okay, cool. So Sachin and Thoma are here. Good stuff. Okay, some people wait exactly till three. Interesting strategy. Maybe I should just schedule things for 255 from now on. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. 
Okay, let me just mark everyone and then we can just get started. Joshua hasn't attended for a while, I think. Sorry. Cool. I'll wait like another minute or so, although we can start joining the thingy. So I'll close the register and share my screen. Um, share screen. Okay, so we will wait like sort of five more minutes until everyone else joins. But for now, you can visit www. It's all the details are at the top of the slide there. So if you visit www.menti.com, and the code this week is 784693. I'll post everything in the chat just so that if you are on your computer, you might be able to just copy paste it. So www.menti.com, and the code is 784693. Let's hope you don't disconnect this week, Saham. Saham. Uh, cool, 784693, yeah, that's correct. Don't need the spaces. You can put the spaces if you want, though. So we'll just wait until 15.05. I am going to start. Um, so I don't want you guys to accuse me of leaving people out because it's just if they're late, I can't wait forever. Okay, I see Arjun's here as well now. Okay, someone's joined the thing. So quick, quick, join the quiz. www.menti.com. The password is 784693. You don't have to create an account or anything. Remember all the stuff about the nickname. You can just leave it, the default one they give you, or you can put your own one. You can do what you like, really. Um, but yeah, I'll just make sure you get in the, the quiz. Yeah, so we'll wait a little while. This is a good way. So to what's the code? Uh, the code is 784693. You can see it at the top of the slide on my shared screen. Um, it's up on the right there, 784693 um, on my shared screen. Okay, we're at five people so far that's pretty good i'm not gonna wait too long um because yeah last time i think we finished the quiz we started at hoppers three last week because you guys had school and we i think we finished the quiz at like 10 to 4 which is too long for this to take we we ideally should finish at like 10 past three to quarter past three um so i'll wait until like another person joins and then we'll get going until around five past three. I don't know. Some people don't like quizzes. I, I guess it being competitive does make it scary, but it also makes it fun, right? Um, and then like the competitive thing makes you, I don't know, want to, want to do well. Wait, so one, two, three. Okay, we're just going to get started, I think. Um, you can join mid quiz, by the way. Yeah, because I remember last week, uh, Saham, you had to rejoin like after question three or something. Okay, so let's get started. Um, one sec. So data structure in which the last item added is the first item removed. Data structure. I'll answer your question when um after after this one's answered, Thelma. Just like in between the breaks, order. Okay, hey, interesting. All right, at least we knew it was between Q and stack, right? It was between Q and stack. Um, okay, but let me just, so um, some, some other people might be wondering as well, so we can talk about this. So you're saying, Thelma, for overall, for this like course, is that what you're asking? Like for the final exam? Or are you asking for this quiz particularly? Okay, you're asking for the final exam. So the final MTA exam is a multiple choice test of 35 questions and the pass mark is 70%. But don't, don't worry, um, we'll do a lot of revision lectures before the exam and stuff, so everything's fine. Um, 
but yeah, the Microsoft does keep quite a high standard. But remember, you guys are like in school still, you're in high school and you're covering topics from first year university computer science. So it's going, it's like, it's, it's a difficult thing that you're doing. It's kind of like you guys are taking AP maths or something. Okay, cool. So we say data structure in which the last item added is the first item removed. So two of you said Q. Um, I think maybe it's because, you know, the, you get extra points for answering quickly. But I think if we think about it, when we say a Q, when we think about a Q, is the last thing that joins the queue the first thing that leaves the queue? That's not correct, is it? Um, the first person in the queue is the first person to be served. So the queue, the first item added, is the first item removed. A stack is the opposite of that, right? Because the last thing you put on a stack is the first thing you take off a stack. Okay, so remember to just be patient with these questions, um, especially, so in this one, Answering quickly get you, gets you extra points, so I don't blame you for rushing. But obviously, in the test, if this is like a multiple choice, take your time and think about think about the question. Of course, um, cool. <laughs> okay, next question. I want to see what the next item out of my data structure will be, but not actually remove it. Which command should I use? So I want to see the next thing, but not remove it. Ooh, we answered quick, hey? Ah, another person has joined. Uh, welcome to whoever the sixth person is. Yo, all of you got it right. Well done, guys, okay? So I don't have to explain this one, but also the word peak, it makes sense, right? You're peaking at the front of the queue or peaking at the top of the stack. Um, so yeah, cool, cool. Data structure in which the first item added is the first item removed. Oh, uh, whoops. <laughs> first item added is the first item removed. I suppose I should, I should um, reread the questions I make if I make them the day before. Guys, you still answered stack, what? Um, okay. So we, we did, I did just give you, the, give you guys the answers to this, right? So first, the first person who enters the queue is the first person served. The last thing to be added on top of a stack is the first thing that comes off it. So what do we call this? A stack we call a LIFO structure, okay? It's LIFO, last in, first out. That's what a stack is. A queue we call a FIFO structure, first in, first out all right because the first person into a queue is the first person served the last um the last pancake that was added to the stack is at the top of the stack right so it's the first one you eat okay so i think this was question three so there's two more which two commands add and remove items to or from a stack, respectively. Okay, so which two commands will add and remove items from a stack? Be careful though, hey, because there is a little bit. Okay. See, have more people joined. Okay, nice. I'm glad most of you got it. Add and remove. That would be the easy way out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so add and remove. Um, add is a command on linked lists, and remove I think probably is too. But but we we haven't really discussed adding and removing. So I'm um, just take note that this this of what the correct answer is. Um, someone said push and peek. So close, this, this is the one I was saying why you must be careful, all right? Because push and peak, push will add something to a stack. Peak will show you what's at that stack, but remember the question is asking here, which two commands add and remove? So it can't, must, we're not just peaking at the top of the stack, we're removing from the stack. 
And so, yeah, the correct answer is push and pop. Okay, so push will add something to a stack, pop will remove it from the stack and also give it back to you. Okay, like return it to you. Okay, um, good stuff. So guys, the last question, I want you to be very careful on. Okay, so when remember when we type these commands into C sharp, they so we we have the word followed by I'll I'll give you a big hint because because um no one last week got it. So like I or the last time I gave this little quiz. So um there's two two symbols that go after the command when we type it in C sharp. Okay. Um, so I'll give you that hint and good luck. Um, this is a typing one, by the way. And there's no need to rush. All correct answers will give you max points. This one's not timed. Using valid C sharp code, complete the following to remove an item from the queue called my queue. So my queue dot, and then there's a blank where you must type in this command. Okay. And the semicolon is already there. Okay, you can see the semicolon already there on the screen. So what would I put there? What command? Remember, um, case sensitive as well. C sharp is case sensitive. So how do we remove an item from a queue? It would take the, the first item, right? Because a queue is first in, first out. So this would take the first item you added and it would take it out of the queue. What command would do that? Written in valid C sharp code. So not just the name. Let's see. Ah, I did tell you guys. I did tell you guys. Okay, I, I, maybe my hint wasn't clear enough. So guys, DQ is the correct is the correct answer, okay? But there are invalid C sharp code. You need those two normal brackets, okay? They're important um, because that's saying you're calling a method, right? We remember methods. Um, so yeah, you you need those two normal brackets. Maybe it's too hard for me to request the normal brackets at the end, but I I don't know. I maybe it's mean, but it's it's all right, I think. Um, but yeah, so when they say valid C sharp code, in order to call a method, you, you need those brackets there, okay. All right. So let's see who, who took this one. Congratulations to Great nickname, great nickname. <laughs> ah, well done, well done. Okay. Cool. But yeah, well done to all of you. I'm glad everyone got the peak answer. That's that's a good good sign. Um, okay, pity that no one got the last question, especially after a hint. Come on, huh? I the hint was we have to put two symbols after it. Um, but you know, no, no, fair enough. I, I'll next time. Okay. Um, next time I'll be. I don't know, more explicit somehow, maybe. Okay, so, cool. Let's continue with sorting. That's where we were left off last week. Um, yeah, well done, Saham. I guess you were... Um, so, cool. So we, we started with sorting yesterday. In particular, we discussed probably quite a new idea to you guys, right? Like, how do I swap two places in memory? Um, but let's just remind ourselves of sort of where we were and and then get, get this chapter three over with. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves what sorting was. Sorting, the process of sorting, was just arranging items in a data structure in any predefined order, right? It could be alphabetical order, descending order, ascending order, some other ordering you could define. And remember, we can define a method um, like compare to, if you guys think back to the iComparable interface, we can always compare two objects to each other. 
right? Like we can define something that'll be able to compare two objects of a particular type to each other, right? Area, whatever. Um, so we can always do this comparison to find this ordering, okay? And the process of sorting is to just sort the things in order, right? So like alphabetical order over here, new, um, ascending order over here, right? So I took the array five, six, three, four, and we sorted it in ascending order, three, four, five, six, right? Makes sense. Um, so, but remember, this is easy for a human to see, right? Like as a human, you just go, okay, three is the smallest. So we would put that at the beginning, right? Um, six is the largest. So we put that at the end. Four is smaller than five. So that would be like the second bit here. Five is larger than four, but it's also smaller than six. So it's the third item. Okay. So like as a human, you can just sort of eyeball it, right? But how do we tell a computer how to do that? Because you can imagine if we have a list of like a million items, how do we sort a list of a million items? That's like quite a lot, right? Um, so cool. The arrays can be very large. So we're trying to make this automatic, basically. I'm trying to make this automatic. Okay. So in order to just simplify this down for us, and don't worry because the, the, this is how it is. So um, this is how it's always done when, when teaching sorting. We are not going to think about like how to do, like how to compare words to find out which one is first in alphabetical order. We're not going to think about all of this other stuff like calculating areas and whatever. We're just going to simplify this down and say that we have a list of integers. Okay. So we're only considering this case on the left here. Okay. We have a list. It can be of any length or an array. Sorry. We have an array. It can be of any length and it just has integers in it. Okay, this one's four, but the one that we're considering could have any number of integers in it, and that's the case we're considering, okay, an array of integers. We're not thinking about linked lists or queues or stacks or strings or anything else, okay, just integers and arrays. Now, the technique we use can be applied outside of that, all right? It can bubble sort and these other sorting algorithms, they can be applied outside of that um, simplification, okay? But we're just not considering that. Okay, so we're just keeping it simple for ourselves, which you'll see as important because it's much easier to think about it this way. Okay, so we're gonna go with an example to explain what bubble sort is for us. So this is sort of where we left off last week. I'm just gonna remind you of sort of what's going on, okay? So we, we have this array here, okay? It's got eight, two, four, one, three. And I want to get it in ascending order. So my goal here is to get one, two, three, four, eight, okay, in the array, in that order. But we want to do it in a way that's automatic. So we wanna go through sort of with the computer how it's going to do this, okay? So where we left off last week is we started by going, we looked at these first two numbers. And remember, we compare things in twos, right? We compare one thing to another thing, and then we go to the next thing, okay? We can't be like, we can't compare all four of these to eight, right? Because we only, we only have our operators. You guys remember the operators like less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. We can only work with these. And if you remember what's special about those is that there's something on the left and something on the right, right? There, it's, it's strict, right? There's something on the left and something on the right. There's only two things and it will return either true or false, okay? So with, with this case here, we have an eight and a two. So perhaps we would ask the question, um, is the thing on the left, so eight, less than two? that is false. So what that means is that the thing on the left of the array is larger than the thing on the right of the array. So they need to be swapped, right, like that. So we saw how the swap takes place because it was a little bit more complicated than we might have, uh, might have assumed, right? Swapping elements is actually kind of difficult. And so I just want us to remind ourselves of how the swap takes place and just set up this example inside Rex Tester. Okay, so Saham, you mentioned that there, there is, um, you mentioned Visual, Visual Studio on the WhatsApp group, and I do sort of agree um, we can start using Visual Studio more. I think 
So I've set, set up Visual Studio Live Share, which means we would all be able to edit the same file at once if we were using Visual Studio, which might get a little bit messy, but we'll, we'll see, okay? Um, but I'll think about using Visual Studio more to sort of show you guys how it works. But Rex Tester for now, um, for this makes sense because I can share the code with you afterwards. Anyway, so I'm gonna create an array, uh, like this array we have here, in the same order. Okay, so I'm gonna create um, int. Okay, int. I'm gonna call my array numbers. Remember, you can call it whatever you want, right? I also installed Unity, which is, yeah, yeah, Unity, Unity is quite cool. I've used it a little bit, but, but not too much. Okay, so we've got 28413. 28413. Okay, so we've got our list of numbers, our array of numbers. I'll start using the proper terminology. Um, so yeah, this is our array of numbers. Okay, so first things first, I want to, I'm gonna print out this array. So I want, to, I want a thing that can just print out this array. Um, if any of you attempted the Code Wars challenge, you guys should actually know, how am I gonna iterate over this array? I wanna get each of the items inside the numbers array. How would, I, how would I go about doing that, guys? So I wanna get out the two and the eight and the four and the one and the three, and I wanna print them out to the screen. What structure would I use to do this easily? Anyone, anyone? Feel free to speak through your mic as well. What structure would I use to, to iterate over this array of ints? Well, so console.write will indeed print out, is how I'll print out something. Yeah, yeah, correct. But, but how am I gonna iterate over the array? If I say that, how would I iterate over this array? What structure would I use? I'd use, I, I, I'm thinking of using some kind of repetition structure. There's four of them, but which ones should I use? Which one should I use in this particular case? Just want an easy way to print out these numbers. I could use a for loop, that's true, but there's a structure that's even more specifically designed for what I'm trying to do, right? I'm just trying to print out everything in the array. So what do you guys think about that? What structure should I use? Hmm, anyone? There's another kind of loop, guys. There's another kind of loop that's designed specifically for going over arrays. Let's see. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, for each, so. For each, precisely. Okay, good stuff, guys. Yeah, for each is correct. Um, so, for each. Okay, so what this is going to do is allow me to go over this array of numbers. Okay, so we'll say int num in numbers, and we'll say, and as Saham said, we will say console.write. Okay, and I'm gonna write out num, okay, because that's the, the array. All right. So currently when I run this, it prints out two eight like twenty-eight thousand four hundred and thirteen. Okay, because there's no spaces between the numbers currently, but we can easily add a space. All I'm gonna do is say plus, and then in a string, I'm gonna put a space. Okay, um, and you can see now it goes, it'll go 28413. Okay, so that's just showing me what's in my array. All right, pretty, pretty simple. Okay. So the reason I did that was just to see, so we could see what order the array was in um, initially. Okay, cool. So we wanna go through this first problem. I, I just, want to, just want us to think about how we're gonna swap positions two and eight. So at what index is position two currently, guys? Can anyone tell me what index is holding position two? I mean the number two, sorry. Zero precisely, and so eight is at one, right? And we, so, so numbers is the name of our array. At position zero, that is a two, okay? And 
numbers at position one is an eight, right? Numbers at position one is an eight. Okay, and we can see that over here when we print out the array, it goes two, eight, four, one, three. So at zero, we have two, and at one, we have eight. Okay, so what we want to see is just um, how do we swap these? Okay, like, like we do on the slide here, where we have eight, two, and then two, eight. I, I, wanted, I want us to learn how to swap these. Do you guys remember the trick we needed to do um, in order to swap things? What was the little trick? We covered it at the end of last week's lecture. What was the little trick we needed to do? Hmm. So you guys agree that in order to save into number zero, yeah, we needed a third variable. I'm glad. And I suppose it was difficult. It's quite difficult to put into words. So maybe that's why. Um, cool. But, but yeah, we need a third variable. So I need an integer called temp. All right. Int temp. Okay. And then I can save number zero. So two into temp. So I can say temp equals number zero. Then I can say numbers one, um, or no, sorry. So now I've saved number zero, right? So I've saved number zero. So I can say um, numbers in position zero equals numbers one. Now you can imagine if I just did this, then I would have lost number zero, right? Because number zero has been overwritten with numbers one. But since I've saved it into a temporary variable, I can now say, all right, numbers one equals the temporary variable. Okay. And so now they are switched around. And when I print this, so you see previously it was 28413. Now it is 82413. Okay. So that's how we do one swap. Okay. That's how we do a single swap. Um, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to declare the temporary variable or um, create the temporary variable on the same line as I set it. So I say int temp equals number zero. Okay, so we do it on three lines like that. We save the, thing, the one thing that we're swapping into the temporary variable. We can then overwrite the item that we saved with the new thing, and then we can set the, um, the other place to, to the temporary variable. Okay. So those are the steps we do. Um, cool. So I just wanted to remind you guys of that. And now we are on to the rest of the for loop. Now, I mean, on to the rest of the bubble sort algorithm. Um, cool. So you guys can follow along on page 78 um, or 77. They've got a whole bunch of tables, which is each step of the bubble sort algorithm. Okay. It's quite a long thing, but the algorithm itself is on the bottom of page 78 of your textbook. We are going to program it in, in like our own way. Um, you can see that it uses lots of loops. There are lots of loops there actually, um, but we'll, we'll see now. Okay, so cool. So the first step was just comparing the first two items. If the one on the left is, the is larger than the one on the right, then we swap them. Okay, pretty simple. But you can see, so now we've solved the first one, right? So two is less than eight, so that's in proper order. But you can see that the rest of the list is still out of order. So what we do is we just slide that, slide what we're comparing up, okay? So we were comparing two and eight. We're now gonna think about eight and four, okay? Eight and four. So we, we agree we would ask the question again, and we can phrase the question in a lot of different ways. Um, we could say, is the thing on the left greater than the thing on the right? Eight greater than four, right? That's true, but we can see that that's wrong, right? When we want it to be an ascending order, we want the thing on the left to be smaller than the thing on the right, right? So depending on how we phrase the question, we could get different answers. Um, if we phrased it how we did last time, we could say, is eight less than four? Okay, that is false. But if we wanted that to be true, then we could say, all right, we need to switch eight and four. 
We now know how to switch eight and four, so we would just do that process again. Okay, and now again, we have to slide up, right? Slide up like that. Is eight less than one? No, it's not, right? Eight is greater than one, but it's on the left, so we need to switch them again. Okay, and we slide up again, and we say, all right, is eight less than three? No, it's not, right? Eight is greater than three, so we swap them again. Okay, so what we've done there is called a pass. We have, we have done one pass over the array. Okay, so what I, what I want you guys to get so far is why this algorithm is called the bubble sort. Okay, the reason it's called bubble sort is because the largest item, okay, or the item that's supposed to be at the end of your, your array. So you see the eight is at the beginning currently, but it's the largest thing in the array, right? Two is less than eight, four is less than eight, one is less than eight, and three is less than eight. So the eight is going to bubble up the array. That's what we would say. It bubbles up the array. So it like, um, it slowly bubbles up the array, goes up and up and up. Okay. And so now when, so we've finished the first part of the for loop, we've gone over the entire array once. That's the first part of the bubble sort algorithm. So eight is in its correct place. Eight is at index four, right? Cause zero, one, two, three, four. Eight is at the end of the array and it is the largest thing in the array. So it's in its correct place. We can stop worrying about it. Okay. Um, the next thing to compare is we, we still need the rest of these items in sorted order, right? It's two, four, one, three. They're way out of order. One is supposed to be at the beginning, two is supposed to be next, three is supposed to be next, and four is supposed to be next. Okay. So these are way out of order. So we have to start the algorithm again. So we start at the beginning. So eight is in its correct place. So I'm just highlighting that it's in the correct place. Um, and what do we expect to happen next time? Four is the next largest thing. So it's gonna bubble up to the top of the array over the next, the next pass, okay? Because that's what the bubble sort does. So let's, let's see that happen. We start at the beginning, exactly the same as last time. We ask the question, is two less than four? It is, right? So we can leave that. Okay, so we do nothing and we move up. Okay, we didn't have to swap them. We ask another question. Is four less than one? No, it is not. Right, it is not. The other way we could ask the question, we could say, is four greater than one? Yes, it is. Okay, that means we need to swap them. Okay, so like, we, we can ask the question either way, depending on how we want to think about it, okay? Um, but we'll see that when we actually program up the algorithm. But we ask the question, so is four less than one? No, it is not. Um, four is greater than one. So we need to swap them. We know how to swap things, right? We would save four into a temporary variable. Um, we would overwrite four with one, and then we would put the temporary variable where the one is, okay? And they'll be swapped, one, four. Okay. And we go up again. Is four less than three? No, it is not. Four is greater than three. So we have to swap them. Okay. And we would do that again. We would save the four into a temporary variable. We would take, we would overwrite the second part of the array with three. And then we would save the temporary variable into where three was. And they would be swapped. Three, four. Okay. And we move up again. Four, eight. Ah. That's cool, right? So when we ask the question, is four less than eight? Um, the answer is true. We don't have to do anything there. Um, that's, that's done. And so we have finished with the next pass, right? Now you can see three is already in its proper place. Four is already in its proper place. Eight is already in its proper place, okay? But we would start the algorithm again. Remember the computer doesn't yet know that this is in the correct order, right? So we would start the algorithm again. We would say, okay, is two less than one? No, it's not. They have to be swapped. Okay. Now, as a human, we can see that this is done, right? This is finished. Okay. One, two, three, four, eight. That's the correct order. Remember that the computer has no way of knowing that. So it would actually continue to repeat. It would continue to go on. Okay. 
until it realized that the array was sorted. Okay. But the important thing to get is that since the largest at each run of the array, right? So, I mean, at each run of the bubble sort algorithm, so at each pass, the first time, eight bubbled up to the top. The second time, four bubbled up to the top. Three was already in its correct place, so it didn't have to bubble up. Two was the last thing to bubble to where it needed to be. Okay, so each thing bubbles up. So as long as you run the algorithm, if you run this algorithm that we did, compare the first two, compare the next two, compare the third two, compare these and swap them when necessary, and then do it again, and then do it again, and then do it again, as long as you do it as many times as there are arrays in the, as there are elements in the array. Okay, so there were five numbers. So we would go over the entire array five times. Okay, so compare the first two, compare the next two, compare the next two, compare the next two, and then start again and go over, start again. And each time the largest thing will come to the top or to where it needs to be. Okay, so you have to go over it five times because there are five things in the array. If there were a million things in the array, then we would go over it a million times. Okay, so it's a lot. Um, but that will get the array into sorted order. All right. Yeah, it's sorted. Okay, so that's quite an interesting thing. I know it might seem a little bit scary, but it is combining a lot of what we've learned from the course. Um, so we are going to go through the algorithm step by step and we're going to implement it together um, so that we can, you know, really get it. And I'm also going to recommend you guys do a kata that requires you to do this. Okay, but let's begin by going into Rex Tester and actually trying to program this up. All right, so, so that we can actually see what's going on, see how this is done. Hopefully you guys can see the, it's, it's just for loops, right? Or loops, it's just repetition, right? We just did the same thing over and over and over. We compared the first two, swapped if it was required, compared the next two, swapped if it was required, compared the next two, swapped if it was required, compared the next two swapped, and we just started again and did the exact same thing, right? We compared, compared, swapped, compared, swapped, compared, compared, swapped, and we would go on and on and on, and it's just repeating, okay? So we know how to repeat things in Rex Tester. We saw that long ago, back in chapter one. We use a for loop, okay? So this is your, the first long algorithm that you guys have seen. So this randomly somewhere, but what does console.beep do? Huh. I mean, so, so Ham, if you're ever interested about this thing, the correct way to do it is say uh, C sharp console class beep. The beep int int method of console class is used to play a beep sound through the console speaker at a specified frequency for a specified duration. These frequency and durations are specified parameters to this method. By default, the beep plays at a frequency of 800 hertz for a duration of 200 milliseconds. Okay, so that's 0.2 of a second. Shall we try it out? I, I don't know if it's gonna work in Rex Tester, but we can just do it just for fun. Okay, so I'm just going to, um, yeah, I, I can leave that. I'm just gonna put a console at the beep. You weren't able to get it to work. Oh, interesting. Okay, um, were you trying it in Rex Tester, Saham? Okay, yeah, because remember Rex Tester is a website, so they might not want you to be able to do this sort of thing. Um, if you want during the break, I'll, I have a thing of Visual Studio, and so we can try it out in Visual Studio and see if it allows us to there, all right. Cool, okay. So, cool, we've got our array of numbers. Let's just first start thinking about how we're going to go over the array. All right, we have our little for each thing at the bottom here. I, we're, we're gonna be ignoring that for now. We don't need to um, swap this right now. Um, so the for each, that's just there to print out the array after we're done. Okay, it's just print out the array after we're done. What we're going to use for this is for loops. Okay, 
Now, guys, there's an implementation, a correct C sharp implementation of um, the bubble sort in your books, okay, on the bottom of page 78. Notice they are using a do while loop there. They are using a do while loop. And inside the do while loop, they have a bunch of other things, okay? They also define the entire method. They go static int bubble sort int numbers. Um, I suppose we can do that as well. Okay, tell you what, we'll we'll define a method for, for our bubble sort as well. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. So let's let's do it properly because this will also prepare you for for the kata in code wars. Okay. So I'm going to make this full screen quickly and we are going to define a method called bubble sort, similar to how they do in the book. Okay. So inside class program, I'm just going to say public static. Now this is not going to return void, okay? We want our, um, we want our bubble sort array to return a list an array of integers okay so i say int with the square brackets because we're returning an array of integers okay so hopefully that makes sense and we say bubble sort okay so our, our method is called bubble sort and we're just going to give it an array of integers to sort okay so it takes in um this array of integers and it's just gonna call it, um, we'll call it R because that's usually what they call arrays on Code Wars. In your book, they call it numbers, okay? And so it is in this method, in this bubble sort method, where we, we are going to program bubble sorts. Okay. Program bubble sorts to sort R. Okay, we're gonna sort R, the array R. Okay. Next, we want to just um, use, use our array instead. So what I'm going to do is say that our thing of numbers no longer just equals this list of numbers, right? It's going to equal the bubble sort method, bubble sort. And notice I need to put the, the brackets at the end because it's calling a method. And I'm going to give the bubble sort um, method an array of integers okay um our array of integers is let me see what it was at the beginning eight two four one three okay it is eight two four one three okay so just to see that, just to make sure that it's coming into the method properly, I'm going to bring down this for each loop just so that we can print everything out so that you guys can, so you guys can see what is, what's going on. And I'm just going to return R at the end, just for now. Okay, return R. All right, let's run this, just make sure it works. Yeah, it does, okay. Um, but we don't need the for each here. We don't have to print out R here. Okay, cool. So I've done the setup here. I'll tell you what, I am just going to share this with you guys immediately um, so that you guys can follow along more easily, like once we have this basic layout defined. All right, so um, I'll say, yeah, everyone can see, only me can edit. You guys will have to copy it. Bryanston, hi. I'll just call it loop templates. Okay. Remember, you guys will have to fork it in order for you to get it. Okay, but there is the URL. Um, and this is a good, good time as well because um, we'll take our sort of break now. Yeah. Okay, let's do a break. I don't want it to be too long. Although if we do go over this console.beep thing, that's that's for fun as well. So we'll, uh, I guess 10 minutes is okay. You guys are a bit ahead of the other classes. So it's all right. So yeah, we'll, we'll come back at 15.55. But Saham, I'm going to open up Visual Studio 
and we're going to see if um, we can get console.beep working. <laughs> Okay, so this is Visual Studio. I've, I've changed the template a little bit. Um, ooh, let's see. Okay, I think I've only got... Um, I've only got Python installed on mine because I did an interview on Monday, like a programming interview, and we used Visual Studio to do Python stuff. So I only actually installed Python. But if we click Tools and Languages here, we can go and click C sharp and say that I want to install C sharp. But wait, do I want to install this C sharp or do I want to install C sharp console application? Okay, no, it's fine. So we can just install C sharp generally. So I'm just going to go ahead and click install here and We'll see, hopefully it works nicely. Okay, it's installing. So let's hope that works and then we can check out this console.beep thing. I think my internet's pretty quick. Oh, it's already done downloading. Yo, that was quick. Mm. Cool. Okay. It's going, it's going, it's going. It's a little bit weird using C sharp on, on Linux, I think, because obviously it was made for Windows stuff. Uh, what is this? The .NET core cannot be located. Okay, it will not be enabled. Make sure that .NET core. You can install it if you want. Uh, okay, uh, we'll have to experiment with that later, but we'll but we can still see if the if this first bit works. Um, but the debugger, I'll have to install at some other point. Um, yeah. By the way, guys, we are at break. We are on break and still until um, uh, five to four, fifteen fifty-five. But yeah, I'm just I'm um, checking out this thing that Saham was asking about. Okay, let's try a new file. Uh, no, so how do I go back home? Visual Studio is very interesting. Hmm. All right, okay, cool. That helps. I'll close this one. Okay, is it now installed? It is installed. Okay, so how do I... Weird that it's not showing on my home page though. Um, okay, we can do it this way. I'll just make a new file on my... Can I rename this, please? Yeah, cool. Desktop. Okay, but is that bad? I don't know if that's saying that this won't work or if it won't. Real pity because the Python one just worked, but let me just see. So if I say using system, does it know it's autocomplete? It doesn't. Uh, so that's a bit bad.
Okay, yeah, it can't be run until I download this thing. So I guess we'll have to do that. Uh, install for Linux, sure. CentOS, Debian. This will be much easier to do on, on Windows, Saham. So I know this looks scary, but this is just because I'm using Linux and, you know, this is a... Ah, okay, that's an easy way to do it. Ooh, wrong thing. Cha 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 cha. But we are doing this live. Installing stuff. Couldn't find any .NET SDK 3.1. Ah, oh, that's a bit annoying. Try this one as well. Oh, ooh, I wanted to go get some water. Oh, I couldn't find it. Okay, but let's just see if that works. Not sure. Why is that necessary? Hmm. Okay, I think I'll have to I'll figure this, figure out how to get this working on Linux at another time, because uh, we are our break is almost finishing. So yeah, sorry about that, Sahan. <coughs> it just apparently the .NET Core is complaining about being installed on Linux, which is fine. Kind of what you would expect, given that it is like a Microsoft thing, but it it can work. And yeah, Visual Studio is quite cool. I mean, you saw how it like auto completes all of the stuff while I was typing. So it makes you move much, much faster than what you can in Rex Tester. There are things that perhaps should work like a console.alerts or something. Ah, no message boxes wouldn't work. But yeah, there's lots of things you can do in Visual Studio that you won't be able to do in Rex Tester, that's for sure. Okay, cool, but let's get started again. Um, so we, we have our array. Um, hopefully you guys somewhat understand this template. Remember that I just sent the link there. So if you open up that link um, in your browser like this, then you'll just be able to click fork it and then get your own version of it. All right, so you, you don't have to set up this template by yourself. And remember that it's not necessary for you to be able to set up this template. Hopefully you understand what the flow is doing, right? So this is just a method that returns a array of integers um, and it takes in an array of integers called array. That's what you really have to get. And it's got a bubble sort here, okay. 
So the thing we have to do here is program bubble sort. Okay. So what, how we're going to start this, um, like is, is pretty, pretty okay. And you've, you've seen it before. I'm just going to start with one for loop. Okay. Cause let's just, we, we can, let's discuss the parts of the algorithm. Okay. So we have to repeat what's going on here, right? So we have, we compare the first two, um, then the second two, then the third two, and then the fourth two, right? And then we repeat that process, okay? So we compare the first two, we compare the second two, we compare the third two, and we compare the fourth two. And we repeat the process again, okay? So we, we have to be, we have to repeat something, okay? So we have to repeat the whole process, but each time we repeat, we're doing five things, right? So we, we do, we compare each of the two elements. So the first two, the second two, the third two, the fourth two. So that's one for loop, right? Going over the entire array once like that um, would be like I is zero, I is one, I is two, I is three, I is four, right? So we repeat that for the array, but we have to repeat that entire thing, okay? So we have to do it, we have to do it multiple times. So we have to repeat that entire thing again. So we go over, we start at zero again, and we go um, I is zero, I is one, I is two, I is three, I is four. Okay. So we go over, so it's almost like a for loop in a for loop, if you can understand. All right. It's a for loop inside a for loop. So we're repeating the, the repetition, if you like. It's pretty meta, it's almost inception, okay? Um, yeah, dreams inside dreams and stuff. This is like four loops inside four loops, okay? So I'll try to explain it um, like very clearly, okay? My visual, uh, yeah, so I selected the dark theme, um, Saham, so it's like, gray instead of white. It's just in your theme, so you can check it in your preferences. But don't worry, we'll be discussing Visual Studio Code a lot um, around chapter five. So, and I'm gonna upgrade my version of Ubuntu soon as well. But for now, focus, focus on, focus on what's going on. Um, yours is purple. Oh yeah, yeah, if you, yeah, the, the Windows version probably would be purple. That makes sense, because their logo is purple. But you still will be able to change the theme. So there'll be a theme somewhere. Um, anyway, yeah, let's focus. Okay, so, cool, what are we doing? So I'll, I'll do a normal for loop for now. Okay, we're gonna do one for loop. So four, um, and we know how this works, right? We need our initial points, we need our condition, and we need our increments. Okay, those are our three important parts here. Okay, so our initial starting point, I am going to make it zero, okay, int j. So I'm using the letter j, int j equals zero, okay, int j equals zero. Our condition is just going to run over the entire array. Now we know that this array has five things in it, okay, but we wouldn't always know, all right? So we want it to be dependent on the length of the array. Like if I add another thing, I want the computer to automatically know that, um, that the array has that length. So every array has, has a special property. So if I say J less than, and it'll be like this. So it's the name of your array, whatever the name of your array is, mine is called R here, dot length with a capital L like that. No brackets on that one because it's a property. Okay, name.length, like that. So I'll say j less than r.length. Again, there's a lot of technicalities here, guys, so I am showing you how to do this in C Sharp. Remember that the questions you get about this will be multiple choice. It's best to understand the algorithm as well, um, so do focus, but also remember that like every little technicality, it, it'll take time to learn the language and practice, but that's why we're doing these code wars things, okay? Um, but just, yeah, 
like as long as you can sort of follow the logic of what I'm doing. Okay. And then I'm just going to say J plus plus. So it's just going up by one. We know what that means, right? J plus plus. I could also say J equals J plus one. You guys remember that? So J plus plus is just a shorter way of adding one to J. Okay. So I'm going to say console.write line. Okay. And I'll print out J just to remind us what J is doing. So it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So why is it doing that? So J starts at zero, right? It runs while it's less than R dot length. Okay, R dot length. So when is it less than that? Zero, one, two, three is less than R dot length because R dot length is five, is six, right? It's got eight, two, four, one, three, six. Okay. I know, I know it's a little, it's a little scary. Okay, but don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll get through it. Um, I, I should, let me just keep it like it is in the slide. So it's A2413. Okay, so that is going to go 0 for 8, 1, 2, 4. I'm sorry, yeah. You, you, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 um, is what, what it'll do. Okay, let's just see. Because the array has five things in it, right? So there's five numbers, but we start counting at zero. You guys, you guys get all that. It's not, it's not too, that's not too bad. There's nothing new there. Okay. But instead of just printing out J, I'm going to print out R at position J. Okay, R at position J. So you guys, you guys get that as well, right? So if, if we say R, that's the name of our array. In position J, the first time the for loop runs, it's gonna be position zero. The next time it runs, it'll be position one. Then it'll be position two. Then it'll be position three. Then it'll be position four. So that's just going to print out a two four one three, okay? Because that's what's in the array that we're giving giving to the method. So when I run that, you see you get a two four one three. So I'm just using J now instead of printing out J, I'm using J as an index for the array. Okay, so it's going zero one two three four. So that's just how loops work. Just to remind you guys, so that we don't don't get lost in what's going on here. Cool. So what is this array doing? That is just an array that is repeating something five times, right? Whatever code I put here will repeat five times. Like if I console.write line, I'll say, I will repeat five times. I will repeat five times. All that's doing, all that array will do is print that out. I will repeat five times. And how many times does it print it? One. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So all that array is doing is repeating something five times. Okay. Cool. So that's the first part of bubble sort. The, we, we just need to repeat something five times. Okay. So what are we repeating? So let's go, let's think about this one more time because it is, I know it is difficult thinking like a computer a little bit, like it's a little bit difficult thinking um, about what it's doing. So when we start, we compare eight and two, right? Then we compare eight and four. Then we compare eight and one, and then we compare eight and three, okay? So we've done something internally there, right? We've done something like, we've, we've done a specific task there, okay? But I want to tell the computer that because there are five numbers in this array, I want it to repeat that entire process because now it's going to go and compare the first two, then the second two, then the third two, and then the next two. I want it to repeat that entire process five times. Okay? So that's what this outer array is doing. It's just going to repeat whatever I put inside the array five times. So that's what I want it to do. That's the correct thing. Okay. Hopefully you all get that. Please tell me to slow down if you're if you're if you're worried. Okay. Um, cool. So I hope you get it. I understand this is it is quite hectic. Remember, this is the end of first year computer science. So um, cool. So the next thing we need to do is this internal part, right? 
we need to tell the computer, how does it compare the first two things and the next two things and the next two things and the next two things? So how does it do that comparison? Well, hopefully you guys can see, we'll just have another for loop, right? So we now need a for loop that'll go over the array. So I'll say for, right, for. Okay, now you, and so I've just got the for structure inside the other for one, inside the other for structure, okay? The outer one is using j, okay? So j equals zero, j less than r dot length, j plus plus. Our inner one, I'm just gonna make use i, but it's the same thing, right? I need an initial part. I'm gonna make it start at zero, int i equals zero. It's gonna stop, okay. Uh, this, this will be, oh, it's a bit technical, but we'll, we'll, we'll get through it, okay? So r dot length, I'm, I'm gonna leave it at r dot length for now. And then I'm gonna say i plus plus. So they're the same, okay? The, the for loop on the outside is identical to the for loop on the inside. You guys agree? The only difference is that the outer one has J and the inner one has I, okay? But like we understood what the outside loop is doing. So the inside loop is just doing the same thing. So the outside loop is going to repeat five times and the inside loop is going to repeat five times for each of the five times. So this one is gonna say, this one's gonna repeat, so it'll go the first time. Then this one will repeat five times. Then the outer one will go again, and the inner one will repeat five times. And the outer one will go again, and the inner one will repeat five times. So does anyone know, like what, how, how much will the inner one repeat? If I say console.write line, I will repeat mm, times. How many times will this inner one repeat? The outside one repeats five times. And for each of the five times this one repeats, the outer one, the inner one will repeat five times. So what, what mathematical relationship is that? Does anyone know? Might be a bit scary because um, it's the first time you guys are seeing. Is it 25 times so? 25, so Saham said 50, that would be three, three, right? If, if the outer loop repeated three times, it would be 15, but yeah, 25 is correct. Can you tell me how you got to 25? Uh, five times five, so. Yeah, exactly, five times five. So the outer loop repeats five times, and each time it repeats, the inner one repeats five times. So we've got five by five, 25. Okay, so I will repeat 25 times. Should We can double check that. It'll be a little bit annoying counting through it, but hopefully you guys will just, um, you know, you'll see. So that is 25 times. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, 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 <laughs> five. Okay, 25 times. Pretty cool. Okay, so great. Okay, little thing that we have to point out. We, we, I do wanna finish this, so let's, um, I hope, cool. I got, guys, I want you to count the number of times this blue line appears, okay? So we're at the beginning. The, the for loop is just starting, the outer for loop is just starting, and the inner loop is about to start repeating. Count how many comparisons we need to do. So there are five things in the list, how many comparisons do we need to do? I want you guys to count them for me and then tell me at the end, okay? And that's the end. How many comparisons do we do, guys? We do four comparisons, okay? So currently, our outer loop is, repeat, is repeating five times. And that's correct, because there's five things in the array, we're happy with that. The inner loop is also repeating five times, but does it need to repeat five times? What do you guys think? It doesn't, right? Because each time it only has to do four things, okay? 
or rather it has to do one thing less than the length of the array, right? Because let me put it this way, if there was another, if there was another number in the array, how many times would, how many comparisons would we do? If there was one extra number in the array, how many comparisons would we do? Five, exactly. And if there were two extra things in the array, how many comparisons would we do? If there were two, exactly. So it's a simple relationship, right? The number of comparisons we do is one less than the length of the array. So our inner loop here, let's, let's go back to our for loop. Our inner loop is going int i equals zero while i is less than r dot length. I'm just gonna throw a minus one there, okay? Minus one. Our inner loop does not have to repeat five times. It only has to repeat four times, okay? Our inner loop will only have to iterate four times, okay? Because it only has to do four comparisons in this case with when it's five, but in general, it will need to do one less than the length of the array that it's working on, okay? Because it has to do one less comparison than that, okay? So now it'll be five times four, so the inner loop is going to repeat 20 times, which will be correct. 20 times. Awesome. So we now need to do the comparisons. So how are we going to do that? Okay. Number one, guys, what structure am I going to use to ask the question? So I want to ask the computer, is the thing on the left greater exactly? Okay, hopefully everyone, everyone would get that one. There, we would use the if statement, right? An if statement just to ask a true or false question, okay? So all this has got to ask. So remember, our array is called R. So all this has to do is it has to say if, okay, um, we're, going to, we're going to take it a bit slow. So um, we need to get the thing on the left, thing on left, okay? If the thing on the left is greater than the thing on the right, then we need to swap them. Okay, and otherwise we don't have to do anything. So we don't even need the else statement, right? All we have to check, right? Because look, if you, if you think about it, if we look at this again, when, when the little square is going on. The first time, the thing on the left is smaller than the thing on the right, so we don't have to swap them, so we do nothing. We just go to the next comparison. Here, the thing on the left is, is, small, is larger than the thing on the right, so we have to swap them. So it swaps them, and then it moves on. Okay. Again, it swaps them, and it moves on, and here it doesn't have to do anything, so the, it's done okay, for, that, for that pass. All right. So same logic here, we, we just need to compare, is the thing on the left greater than the thing on the right? If it is, then we need to swap, okay? So I've been saying thing on the left, thing on the right. How are we going to get the thing on the left and the thing on the right? And this might be, once you see it, I think you'll, you'll get it. Once you see it, I think you'll get it but let's, let's just think about it here. Okay, so in our inner loop, our inner loop starts at zero. So let me, I wanna see if you guys can get the rule. So our inner loop, I is initially zero, okay? The outer loop is gonna repeat this five times, but it doesn't matter, it's the same every time. So our, exactly, so I starts at zero, right? So zero is two, right? Zero is two it needs to compare zero to four. What index is four at, guys? It's at one. Okay, so it's comparing position zero and then one. Okay, and it does that comparison. It checks if, if the thing on the left is greater than, and if it is, then it'll do something. If not, it moves on. Okay, so the loop continues. Now, i becomes one, right? Because we say i plus one, so i becomes one. And on the next run, we need to compare four and one. So we've seen already four was at position one, okay? One, what position is one at? What index is, is the number one at? 
two, exactly. So we're comparing index one to index two. Okay. We see that these ones need to be swapped, so we swap them. That's what our if statement will do. And then we move on to the next iteration of the for loop. So we add one to i again. So i is now two, and we move on to the next step. So we're trying to compare four and three. So i is two. We saw that four was at index two. What index is, it, is three at, guys? What index is the number three at? Three, sir. Three, exactly. So we, we compare them and we swap them. And now we need to add one to i again. So i is going to be three now. And we go on. So we're now comparing index three and index four. Okay, so did you notice on the first run, i was zero. Okay, and we were comparing zero and one. On the second run, i was one and we were comparing one and two. On the third run, I was two, and we were comparing two and three. On the, third, on the last run, I was three, and we were comparing three and four. Okay, so what is the rule here, guys? The thing on the left is always at I, right? So thing on the left will be R in position I, right? Thing on the left is R at position I. What's the thing on the right? How would I access the thing on the right? R I plus one. R I plus one. Cool. I know we're moving through it slowly, but there is a lot of, there's a lot of new ideas here. So I do want you, because this is probably the first proper algorithm that you guys are seeing. So, ah, yeah, you could, you could, ooh, so Han, so if you do it that way, that um, will be, that's dangerous. So you must do it this way. If, if you wanted to use plus plus, you must use plus plus I, because remember, remember the special thing, it'll read from left to right. So if you say I plus plus, it's going to be zero, it'll give you zero. But if you say plus plus I, it'll give you one. So, so yeah, good thinking, but you must be careful when you do that kind of stuff. So we are just going to say I plus one because it's, because it's a bit safer, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I mean, hundred percent, you could, you could use those kinds of ideas as well. Oh, wait, but also the other thing, do not use plus plus here. Okay. Because remember the for loop is adding one to I. So we're not looking to add one to I here. Right? So I'm not saying i equals i plus 1 because I don't want i to actually increase. i will increase when the for loop ends this iteration. Okay, So always say i plus 1 in this case. Okay, So you must be very careful. Um, so yeah, it, it was somewhat of a clever suggestion, but that kind of stuff is, is dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous. Um, so yeah, hopefully you understand. So i plus 1 is not actually adding one to the variable i, right? It's not saying i equals i plus one. Whereas if I say plus plus i, then this will add one to i and the for loop will add one to i. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna say i plus one, okay? So yeah, very dangerous, but it's cool that you brought it up because it's nice thinking about that, okay? Um, but yeah, so programming can be, um, there's a lot of, lot of weird rules. Okay, cool. So if ri is greater than ri plus one, we want to swap them. So how am I going to do that? Well, we need our temporary variable. Okay. So I'm going to say int temp equals r in position i. I'm going to go through this a little bit quick because we have discussed the swapping idea quite a lot. So I'm saving r in position i, and then I say r i equals r i plus one. Okay, and then I say r i plus one equals temp. Okay, and that's it guys. That's the bubble sort. Okay, that is bubble sort. 
So when I run this, you'll see at the end of the code, it points out, prints out one, two, three, four, eight. One, two, three, four, eight. I gave it eight, two, four, one, three, and it printed out one, two, three, four, eight. And you can see I can add on a bunch of, um, I can add on a bunch of numbers and I'll add an 11 at the beginning and a 13. And I don't know, we can put like a, a another four in. And you can see when I run it, um, it'll print out all the numbers in order. Zero, one, two, three, four, four, six, eight, 11, 13. Okay. So that is bubble sort. That is how we sort an array of integers. Okay. Cool. That is it for today's lesson. And that is actually basically it for chapter three. We'll do a bit more discussion, um, but maybe next week we'll do the quiz, uh, the, the sort of little mock test thing, maybe. Uh, we'll think about it. Okay. Cool, but that is bubble sort. I know it's probably quite a lot to take in, but before we go, I wanna discuss code wars a little bit. All right. So last week um, we said we were gonna do the array plus array um, kata. I know some of you guys did, did sort of attempt it, but before we get onto that, you can see here, I, we, I have a lot of allies here, okay? I'm not sure if any of them are, are Bryanston students, did, can, if, if you guys can tell me, but yeah, there's a lot of different students from different schools here. All of you, if you've solved the first kata, you'll have two points, okay? I mean the initiation challenge. So if you've created an account on Code Wars, you have two honor. Okay, the how you join this clan so that I'll be able to see the, the your account is you'll go to account settings. So you click on the top right there, account settings. And all you have to do is in this clan section here, clan, you just type brighter futures. It needs to be exactly how I've typed it here. Brighter futures, capital B, capital F, space in between and then you'll automatically join my clan, okay? And with the, with the other students as well, and we'll go ahead and um, start, you know, solving cutters together. And you'd be able to see on social all your, all your clan mates, okay? Cool. So that's the first thing. Next, how do we do cutters? So we'll go through that now. So you click on the left here, you go to cutter, so on the left where this little circular thing is, we go to Kata. And so, yeah, uh, let's solve one together. So last week we said we were gonna try out array plus array. Um, maybe a bit, bit hectic, but we'll, I'll click here. And, and you guys will see that it's probably, up, if you guys under, managed understood, which it seems you did, if you managed understood bubble sort, I think this array plus array Kata you guys will you will definitely understand. Should I? Should we leave this one for an extra week? Do you guys want to attempt to do this one this week as well? Because there is a kata where you'll have to program bubble sort. Um, tell you what, I'll solve this kata here and I'll tell you the other kata so that you can go yourself, okay? So anyway, when you click on kata, to find a kata, 8Q are the easiest, 8Q, um, guys, start start by trying out the eight cues because the problems are on here are puzzles. They are quite difficult. Okay, um, so don't get like demoralized or anything. Always just you know um, start working through them on the lower side. Okay, so you type array plus array. That's the name of the cutter into the search bar. You click eight Q to filter out the eight Q cutter. You can see I've got a tick here because I've already solved this cutter. But you can click on the language you want to solve it in on the right here is C sharp, okay, you wanna do it in C sharp and it'll open up the cutter, okay, it'll open up this screen here. So on the left, you're given instructions. So it says, I'm new to coding and now I want to get the sum of two arrays. Actually, the sum of all their elements. I'd appreciate your help. P.S. Each array includes only integer numbers. The output is a number two. Okay, so he wants, the, the person who made this cutter wants you to solve the solve this problem of adding two arrays together. Okay, so that's the instructions. You can click on output here. There's past solutions as well because I've solved this kata, so I could see how I solved it previously. But you won't have that yet. You'll have output though. So it says your results will be shown here. Cool. 
So on the right, you'll be given something like this, all right? It won't look exactly like mine. I have typed a little here. Yours will look something like this maybe, or maybe even like this. The goal of this cutter, it's called array plus array. You're given an array one, a R1. Okay, so you're given two arrays. The first array is R1, the second array is R2. The person asking the question wants you to add them together. So let me, let me show you sort of what the idea is. Okay. So the person will give you two arrays. So like R1, I'm, I'm not gonna write it out in full, but it'll be something like five, six, seven. Okay, and R2, will be something like, let's say, uh, three, four, five, okay? The, the person who made this cutter wants you to add five plus six plus seven, okay? That's 18, okay? Then plus three is 21, plus four is 25, plus five is 30. So the person who wants, who made this cutter would, in this case, want you to return 30, okay? But, it has to work for any arrays. So I can give you any R1 and any R2 and your solution must work, okay? So the arrays are already given to you in the method, so R1, R2. So I'm gonna show you guys how I would solve this one and I'll recommend the next cutter to you and then, and then you can go do that, okay? So, we know how to iterate over arrays, right? So we would click for each int num in R1, right? Let me, can I zoom in a bit? I can't really. Um, so yeah, sorry if it's a little bit tough to see guys, that's, that's about as much as I can go without making it too small. Okay, so for each int num in R1, all right, you guys understand that. That's just going over the array with a for each loop. And I would need to do that. So I need to add up everything in R1, right? Like we were saying, five plus six plus whatever. So what I'm gonna create is an integer called answer. And I'm gonna set it to zero, okay? And then I'll say answer equals answer plus num, okay? So that will add up everything in R1. And I now wanna add up everything in R2 as well, right? And R1 was given up here, that's where I saw its name. R2 is given up here as well, okay? So I'll say for each int num in R2, right? And then I'll say answer equals answer plus None. Okay, and at the end, I'm just gonna return answer. Cool, so that seems like a fairly decent attempt. Maybe it'll work, maybe it'll won't. Um, and how we check is we go into the bottom right here and we click test, okay? So we click test and it runs some tests, okay? And it'll go, oh look, I've passed all the tests. So it says you have passed all the tests, great. You can see if I broke my code. So if, let's say in the second array, I didn't run, I didn't add none. Then when I click tests, it'll say, it'll say that I failed the tests. So it says I expected 21, but the answer was six. Okay, so I wasn't adding the other array. So I'll now say plus num, and then I pass all the tests. Okay, so when I click test, it passes all the tests. Okay, once you're passing all the tests when you click test, you can click attempt. Right, so you click attempt and it'll go, it'll go and run even more tests, tests that are hidden from you, okay? And you can see in this case, it did pass those other tests. And right at the end, after you've done that, you can click submit. Um, and once you click submit, you'll be able to see other people's solutions and um, go, through, go through how other people were doing, okay? I've already submitted this cutter a few times. So you can see my past solution is right over here. Um, so I don't wanna spam them too much, but yeah. So you can see I've, I've already submitted this cutter. Okay. You can also click on, um, once, once you've submitted it, you'll also be able to see how other people were doing and what other people in your clan did and stuff like that. 
So it's quite a it's quite a cool thing. Okay. So, guys, by by next week, I would like you to have all created your Code Wars accounts, solved the kata called array plus array, and joined my clan. Okay. So you'll type or our clan rather. No one really controls them because you can just type this in your in your tag and you'll automatically join. Okay. Brighter futures. I'd like you to have joined my clan. Next, and I, I don't know, I don't want to overwork you guys, but the if you're looking for another cutter to do, and if you guys haven't done it, maybe I'll just recommend it again next week, um, is an 8Q cutter called, ooh, is it, oh, is it 7Q maybe? Yeah, um, it's a 7Q cutter called sort numbers. Okay. Sort numbers. The way you'll do this kata, so look, it just says finish the solution so that it sorts a past an array. Ah, uh, okay. So, Sahan, so the Q are like difficulties. So, each kata has a difficulty ranging from 8Q to 1Q. 8Q is the easiest, 1Q is the hardest. Okay. And these 1Q problems are very difficult. I started. Like for my interview on Monday, I was doing like 5Q questions or even 6Q, like I was in this sort of area, okay? Five and 6Q. So like, yeah, 6Q, you'll get a job as a programmer. <laughs> so don't, um, yeah, so don't worry. Like they are, they can be quite challenging. 8Q is like more beginner stuff. But but still still a puzzle. It's still difficult. And if you're not familiar with the language, it'll still be challenging. Okay, so don't worry um, about doing like six Q stuff and eight Q and seven Q stuff. Okay, cool. So the the cutter that I want you guys to have done by next week is called array plus array. Um, if you finish that easily, and since you just watched me do it, you should be able to finish it easier. Um, you can continue with the kata called sort. Is it called sort? It's a seven Q kata called sort numbers. Okay, so you can continue with the seven Q kata called sort numbers. And in this kata sort numbers, I'll tell you now the solution is basically bubble um, is basically bubble sort. The only thing is that you also, if they give you nothing, you have to. So you have to have an if statement at the beginning asking if they've given you null. So if equals equals null is how you would check that. And if it does equal equal null, you must just say return new int. Okay, they just tell you there on that second line there. Okay, So that's the hint I'll give you, but don't worry about doing sort numbers too much. But if you want another challenge and the solution is what we just learned in this lecture. Okay, but you'll just have to program that up. Um, but yeah, the one I'm recommending that you guys definitely have done is this one you just watched me do. Um, do attempt to do it yourself with, from what you remember, but it's called array plus array, all right? And it's an 8Q cutter. Okay, and also join, join my clan as I explained, right? You go to account settings and you view clan and you just type brighter features there and you'll automatically join. Okay, awesome. I used four minutes extra of your time, so sorry about that. Oh, I see Joshua made it. Um, so I think there were some people who were absent today, but I'll add everyone else who was here maybe a bit late to the, to the thing. Wait, who, who is you, w, blah, 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 who like this U W one, this long nickname, just so that I can mark you on the register. But yeah, we are done for today, guys. Thank you for coming. I know this one was maybe a challenging one. Bubble sorts is pretty, pretty hectic, but well done. And yeah, glad we managed. Cool. So that was me searching. Ah, okay, cool. I've already marked you. I've Sorry. Marked you. Okay, I've already marked you on the register. Oh, no, no, it's no problem. You can, you can have whatever nickname you like, of course. Um, I was just just making sure, but I've already put you on the register, so it's no no problem at all. Okay, so let me just mark off. I think Joshua was the only person here who I hadn't marked yet, so let me do that. Um, yeah, and Thelma was already marked as well. Yeah. 
Ah, interesting. So Connor and Rhea were absent today. That's a bit worrying. Um, but hopefully that's all fixed next week. Cool. Anyway, bye guys and thank you. You can you feel free to welcome me if you need any help on the Code Wars challenges this week. And um, if you need any more hints or if you're having like a small problem. But do try to read through the code yourself because I think you a lot of you will be able to find the errors that you see. Right, just make sure that semicolons are in the correct place, things that are correctly capitalized, things like that. Uh, yeah, cheers, Saham. Uh, cheers, Saham. Bye bye, bye bye. And yeah, thank you. Uh, see you next week.